Let's take a, an email from Jim in Summerfield. Says he listens to the show every Saturday, sees your TV and billboard ads all around town. I concur. I also see them. Uh, he says that he's noticed several of his neighbors putting their homes on the market. They're considering selling as well. So here's the concern. Is it possible for the market to get flooded with homes that would then drive prices down? Because right now they're incredible. Um, should right. we sell now to not risk waiting? What do you think? Uh, thank you, Jim. Okay, very good. Well, Jim, it's, it's, it is a great question. And, and so this is, this is part of that strategy session that we offer all of our clients and potential clients. So I, I'm going to look at I'm, I'm just going to tell you what I, I would do, and, and this was simply based on the math and, and the numbers that I'm looking at, is if I was planning to sell anyway in the next, say, year to whatever, 24 months, year or two, I would probably go ahead and do it now. I would probably excel my plan. And, and you know, the main reason is we know what is going on today. Um, 24 months from now, I mean, that's, it's 100% speculative. We, we, we don't know. We just we can't know for 100% certainty. I mean, think about this. If we look back 24 months, no one would have predicted that we were in the situation we're in right now. I, I mean, they would not have been – there were some feelers, maybe just a little bit out there, that, okay, things are going to start to improve. But it really didn't accelerate until August of probably 2020. And, man, that is when this thing started gaining momentum like crazy. So it, it's still not – obviously, it's not that long ago. So two years ago, you would not have predicted the situation we're in now at all, especially with, with new construction. Um, no way, because – I mean, 24 months ago, nobody was even talking about COVID. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, no, no, no pandemic. Uh, everything was just, well, the way it was. And, and so, you know, your risk, I guess, if you look at any kind of risk, is you, you potentially could leave some money on the table um, because it could continue to still go up. It, it's always possible, but, you know, on the flip side, if you don't, then you could, you know, you could just lose some equity. You know, so it's, it's really. I always go back to the decision is when you're ready. I mean, that's really the key. Um, I, I don't even like to factor in money into the, into the equation because it, it's a timing thing in which everybody's guessing. You know, everybody's going to guess what the top is, what the bottom is. You know, we ran into the same thing in 2008. You know, I had a lot of investors like, you know, should I buy, should I buy, because prices kept on going down and down and down and down. And then if you waited too long, um, you started buying when, what, when they started to go back up. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that you're, you're never going to be perfect at, at timing it. It really comes down to what makes sense for you. And if you're going to move anyway in the next couple years, I do think this is probably a really good time to take that in consideration. But, you know, the real estate demand – um, in, in certain you know certain areas of the triad, probably will continue to push up prices. And now, it just depends on what price point you're in. Obviously, the higher the price, probably the less demand. But if you're in the you know in the 180 to 350 range, it's it's bananas right now, Keith. I mm-hmm. mean, it is unbelievable. So, but that this is part of our um, our strategy session. This is where we really dive deep into the data. And the numbers and make sure you know we're hitting it as best we can with all these market indicators, and and sometimes it is subdivision specific. So we look at the whole market, then we look at the city, town, or whatever you're in, and then we look at your isolated subdivision or area, and, and it really does get to be that specific. But you know, I'd say 90% of the time, um, what we're looking at is yeah, you're probably getting very close to the peak or what the peak is right now. And it's probably a good time to consider doing exactly that, cashing out. So, you know, last year, we, last year, last <laughs> week uh, on the show, we talked about the record number of price decreases that was recorded in our triad MLS, which is, it kind of goes against the grain of what's out of the word out on the street, right? Everything's selling quick. You can sell your house in a day, but yet we're still seeing prices being pulled back in certain areas. And so, you know, there's definitely some subdivisions that are that are topping out. No, no question. The market is pushing back, um, but actually, I should say it's the market. It, it's it's really mainly from the banks. 
Um, not the consumer. The consumer's willing. The bank, not so much. The bank's like, wait a minute, um, are we getting ourselves underwater by allowing this consumer to pay this much over the asking price of the house? And, it, you know, we've talked about it for years on the show. It's the golden rule. They that have the gold, rule. That's right. And so <laughs> I, I, tell, I tell the owners all the time, you know, we have to sell your home twice today. We have to sell it to one a consumer that's willing to pay your price or more, and then if they're getting financing, we have to sell it to a bank that's willing to agree for what they just signed up for. And sometimes the consumer is more than willing because it fits their budget. Um, money is very, very cheap. So the fact that they're willing to pay thirty thousand dollars more than asking price really only affects their payment, like sixty bucks a month. But to the bank, it's thirty thousand dollars underwater potentially, and so that's a bigger number and a different number and they look at it different so you know i mean we still have about 80 percent of the homes being sold that are getting financed so it is something you're gonna have to deal deal with or i do have some owners that say well we just won't take a financed offer we'll wait for somebody to pay cash and and you can do that just remember that if 80 percent are getting loans that means it's only 20 percent are paying cash so you just shrunk your buyer pool down um considerably and of the people paying cash, are they looking for what you have to offer? And, and there is still the old mindset to get over with people to pay cash. When people pay cash, they still feel like they should get a better price. It just depends on the demand for your particular house and its location. So all of those are things that we dig into, Jim. It is a great question. We've actually had that one a couple times in the last month. So I appreciate you um, putting it to the top of my email so we could share it with everybody right here on the radio. 